Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in to uh, KUTV Rise today. Ojuang Mariam, cryptocurrency is disrupting CBK as more sellers are accepting cryptocurrency as a mode of payment. Ah, yeah, that's 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 much is true. Movies and Shaker, that is Emperor Shaker, the host of uh, uh, Entertainment Friday here on KUTV Rise today. And I said, the CBK should be more receptive to cryptocurrency. Thank you. That's all you had to say this morning. Asante sana, Emperor Shaker, for your feedback. Now, there is a te- there's a, there's a name for the common mwananchi. I think it's Swanjiko, yeah? Yeah, it's Wanjiko. But now on set, I'm joined by Wanjiro. Um, she's sitting next to me and, uh, you know, speaking to the common Mwananchi today, Wanjiko. So Wanjiro is speaking to the Wanjikos out there about Forex. So we just had a conversation on cryptocurrency. And of course, I had asked Mr. Adida, you from Nigeria to, you know, tell us what are kind of the risks that someone should consider when they want to invest either in the money market or in the stock market vis-a-vis investing in the cryptocurrency market. His opinion is that, Everything has a risk. As an investor, you should know that you shouldn't put all your money in one thing, but you should know that all risks are there. You just use, it's, it's just up to you to evaluate how much risks uh, or how much risk you want to bear. So let's take a look at uh, Forex and see how much risk is there and how easy or how difficult it is to invest in that world. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me today. I hope that introduction was deserving. Yeah, that's good. Right. Maybe a little bit of introduction to our viewers who might not know you. Um, what kind of uh, ac- what kind of activities that you do around the world of forex? Uh, good morning, viewers. My name is Wanjiru Gishangi. I'm a forex trader, writer, and mentor. Right. You are a writer as well. Do you write on yes. matters of forex? Yes, I write uh, on matters of forex. Where? Like I self-publish. Oh, you self-publish. You have like a site or book. Yes, like I have, uh, I have books. Mm-hmm. I have published my first book, mm-hmm. where I'm holding for you today. Ah, it's this one. <laughs> do, do I get to have a copy signed by the author? <laughs> How to make money in forex? Beginner's guide to forex trading with more than five trading strategies. Five trading strategies. This is your book. Yes, that's my first book. Then uh-huh. I have three more, so I have four books in uh, forex. Uh, are those in waiting or are they already out published? They're out, but I've not published them. They are in ebook form. Uh, when was this one published? Two years ago. Mm, you've had knowledge on Forex for probably way longer than two years, yeah? Yes, this is what I did in campus. Ah, you studied this in campus? Yeah. How long How long have you been doing this? Uh, a few years now. A few years now. <laughs> right, so how to make money in Forex using five trading strategies. What are they? What are the five trading sites? Or does someone have to read it? To, yeah, to you have to, to, to read it because there are so many strategies uh, in Forex. If you're in Forex, you know, there are over a thousand trading strategies. So in my first book, I've just picked the simplest for the beginners. And not, not only are they simple, they are also stable because you need stability. You need something that you can self-train. Uh, basically, the e-books are for people who want to self-train because not everyone is going to get a genuine mentor out here. So you want to get a book and actually use it to make a coin for yourself. So that's what the beginners does the beginner guide does but also there are people who are in the market but they have not gotten consistency so if you're a trader and you've not get consistent then you know that you're not making anything you're making a dollar today and losing two tomorrow so the beginner guide helps you with that kind of stability so right yeah so now when you are starting out to trade in forex do you have a mentor yourself Oh, I had a hundred of them. Ah. Eighty of them were fakes, commas, and everything. (laughs) (laughs) Then I got someone, I think I got lucky after three years of trying. And I got someone genuine who held my hand, and here I am. It took you three years? Yeah, it took me three years of losing everything. Yeah, with 80 fake mentors. What is the first thing that someone should know before they go into the world of Forex? Google. Know how to use Google before you even talk to anybody. Google, please, research what the market is about. There's so many people who think forex trading is betting. There's so many people who just want to be taught. You don't even know what it is and you're coming to be taught. What will I teach you if you don't even know? So you need to first research. Get an idea. What kind of market am I getting into? How does it operate? Get to know what is sold there. You don't just say, I'm trading forex. What exactly are you trading? You want to know that so that even the your mentor, if he or she is a scammer, they don't get you to like take real advantage of you. If you're going to lose some money to someone, lose like someone who got something, you know. 
like right. some brains <laughs> look like uh, lose like someone who's got brains yeah. <laughs> lose with strategy now because you've mentioned a couple of things uh, in s- especially including um you know people not knowing exactly what forex is what they are trading maybe you can begin there what what exactly happens in the world of forex Okay, forex trading is basically trading of currencies and other tradable items online in a market like it's a forex market it's a real real market and i want to be very very clear it's a real market just like we have gikomba in our country it's a real market only that now in this market you trade virtual money like you're trading virtual you're trading online but you're trading currencies you're trading cryptos you had a thing with the blockchain we have cryptos in the forex market we have metals these are gold and others we also have indices exotics commodities even sugar so it's a market all you have to do is know how to navigate in this market and also be very specific or very focused on what you want because you cannot be everywhere you cannot be trading cryptos tomorrow you're on currencies the next day you're on metals you have to really have like uh, focus just know what you want and just focus on it have which a strategy is, which is the most popular of all these items that you've mentioned in forex currencies the right. currencies are easy and actually the best place to start start with currencies of course they don't pay as much as the heavier items like metals gold mm-hmm. and everything else mm-hmm. but it gives you like um, a stepping stone mm-hmm. yeah a stepping stone into you know of course the other the other heavier commodities yeah. ah all right so now currency is the most popular but is it the, also the most volatile i hear a lot of people complaining about volatility in forex is this the one that is most volatile no 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 the metals are most volatile and also the indices because they are quite heavy and they move really fast with no direction at all but the currencies also they are currencies that are quite volatile when we talk about volatility There's so many definitions of volatility you can say moving fast moving sideways but for me volatility is basically volume based mm-hmm. how heavy is this item so currencies are not very volatile per se but there are also those that move really awkwardly right. yeah. people say that in the world of forex there's many factors that uh, you know influence how 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 trading happens on that platform that is uh, something that is different maybe from a normal market let's say for example if the someone if the president said something right now the price of sugar won't shoot up is that uh, something that happens in the world of forex i hear so many factors influence how trading happens Yeah sure forex market is basically economically influenced so if a president goes to twitter and tweets something weird a currency just should up or down so it's something that if you want to really get into you also need to understand how that specific country let's say you you're working with a currency whichever currency you pick of course belongs to a certain ca- uh, country you want to know the economics of that country but for a beginner i usually say pick something that is major meaning for it to be influenced by the president or anything it to take some time take you know some unless time. there's a tsunami as the tsunami will affect <laughs> anything something catastrophic yeah. Ah. Yeah. unless it's something really, really serious you want to deal with a stable currency mm-hmm. and the majors are good the majors are good okay now which now before someone gets into this market how do they do that where is this market at and how do i get in okay as a beginner first i said google So when you're googling of course you get to know where the market is then you have to use a broker. When you talk about a broker it's like a company. Just like we have if you want to use Mpesa you have to use Safaricom. You can just say I want to use Mpesa but not through Safaricom. So when you want to get to the forex market you have to use a broker. So there's so many brokers in this field you just need to find one who is well regulated. How do you know uh, a company is regulated? You go to their website and check their certificates. At the bottom side of each website there are certificates. And of course you just take the certificate number Google from that uh, company or body that has certified them, check if they are well regulated. That's very important for beginners. Don't just take a broker because you've seen their good reviews online. You need to make sure they're regulated. Why is that important? Because they could rest up be scammers or they can just close shop tomorrow. And you, you know, know what know to, to do. <laughs> you don't even know which country they come from. Also something important get people who have good spreads. When you talk about spread, this is basically pricing. There's so many brokers who do price manipulation. So as a beginner, you may not really know about price manipulation, but that's something that gets to you as you move on and also have a trading community, which is very important. Don't just be a lone wolf, you know? You just want to get in, secretly not talk with anyone. No, no, no. Go to those trading communities 
Talk to people who have done it so that they can guide you. I'm not saying you copy paste them because they could be doing it wrong, but have an idea. Talk to someone who has done it so that you may know what to avoid, especially with the brokers. Mm -hmm. And of course, get one who has good customer support. Mm -hmm. Good customer support means you can call them because you may lose power or Wi-Fi in your house and you have a trade running. Right, and you, you need should, them. You need mm -hmm. them. You need them to get into your account, close your trade before you lose your account. So get someone uh, or a company that has uh, emails or phone numbers, but not those people who keep calling you. <laughs> <laughs> will, yeah. that, will it ever get to a point where I don't need a broker? I just need to do it on my own? Nope. Why, why, why is that? Does the broker also have their own broker? <laughs> because the brokers are the link between the market and the retailers. Mm -hmm. Now, basically, if you go to the history of Forex, it was not like a retail kind of market. It was a government trade against government or to each other and the banks and institutions. It was not really made for retailers like me and you. Mm -hmm. No, no. It's just banks, this country importing and exporting to wherever. So this opportunity for us to trade, we can just we we less than two percent in the market. It's right. all institutions and hedge funds and government. So mm -hmm. I don't I don't see that. Right. So now, how much will it cost me to get a broker? It's free. Ah. It's free to to get a broker. It's free. You just go to their website, open a dummy account. There's something ah, called okay. dummy or demo account mm -hmm. that gives you a feel of what the market does. It's a free account. Never pay anybody to get a demo account. It's a free account. It's given by every broker in this world. It just gives you a feel of the market so that you have a relationship with the market and just to see how it happens. What is the first mistake that you will say people do so that they that makes them lose so much money that you've seen over the years? Being eager to just give your money to anybody who tells you they can trade for you. Wow, so that's uh, scammers in short. Yes, when, you, when you're lazy. I basically say, if you've ever <laughs> been scammed, you're just lazy. Because that means you gave me your money. I didn't even show you my account. I didn't even show you my statement. Or if I did, I forged them. And then you just go give me your money to trade for you now. That's the easiest way to be scammed. So don't give anybody your money. Go stay on that demo. Be on that demo for 10 years if that is what your brain requires. Mm -hmm. Be there for those 10 years. Invest those 10 years in your dummy until you understand what the market does. You do it someday. So there's no like a specific time period that you can say that uh, in two months you'll be good. It, it's, it varies, I'm guessing, uh, across various users. There is no time frame because you basically wired differently. Our brains are wired differently. There are people who get it in a week, in a month. There are people like me who take years. <laughs> people can actually do forex trading as a main source of income. Yes, forex trading is a business like any other. You just have to approach it professionally and you just do it. Nothing else, just be a trader. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you'll be good to go. You're good to go. It's a business. There are people who live out of going to Gikomba to take bills. Mm -hmm. So you can just live with a computer and that's it. All you have to do is be very disciplined. Mm. It takes a lot of discipline. You've been teaching people on how to trade on, uh, on online. How has that been going and exactly how does that happen? Huh? Basically, is how you, I have a page on Facebook and other social platforms like Forex Exploits Online Academy. I just post free posts there. I'll explain to people how to start. There will be beginner posts. I'll do live videos. Then I also write. So you can get there and get my ebooks, then you know how to do it on your own. Then there are people who are like, I've read all your books, but I didn't get it. Can I talk to you? <laughs> then there's COVID. So we basically do Zoom calls and yeah. Is there a learn. cost? Is there a cost? Yeah, for my time, yes. <laughs> t t tell us, tell us. What is the cost for someone? It depends what you want to learn. One, I don't do basics. I don't train basics because basics. <laughs> you already wrote for that. <laughs> I already wrote your beginner guide. So I don't train basics. I talk to people who want intermediate strategies that are not on the ebook mm -hmm. or other market ideas that you need those strategies because in this market, uh, the ears have given me an experience that I can try it about, but I can share. So. In, at, the, at the back of this book, you're saying that uh, to trade in Forex, you need discipline. But what exactly? What, what kind of discipline does one need? Uh, in Forex trading, you need to be disciplined. One, you need to be faithful. I keep saying on my page, you have to be faithful. Uh, when I talk about faithfulness in Forex, is whoever you choose to, uh, to follow or to mentor you, you should actually try your best 
to just follow them only because there's one illness that's called too much information paralysis you follow wanjiro today for richard tomorrow you for abcd then you'll be confused you don't know what to do the market will be moving you're like did wanjiro say this did richard say this was this what the mate no now you need to be disciplined that if they tell you these are rules because something i've learned over the years is that forex is about rules each strategy has rules so whatever rules you given have the discipline to follow that if you're not disciplined this ain't the field for you yeah right do we have a question my producer we have two questions now <laughs> it is time for identify the brand or name the brand and zero you might hate this but you have to <laughs> you'll have to do it <laughs> so take this paper <laughs> thank you thank you thank you very much um so for those guys who are at home get your fingers to the comment section um you can actually lose the mic for a second because you will need your right hand um yeah nice nice you don't have a pen so we're playing identify the brand so if you're at home we have two questions for you just like last week and the other week and the week before we're going to play it here i'm going to receive quest a question two questions from my director mr bonfes and uh we are going to play it i have no idea what he's asking two <laughs> so let's go the first question name five cryptocurrencies other than bitcoin we have 20 seconds Ay, my goodness. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how it happens that I always go blank when the timer rolls. But um that was the first question. The second question. <laughs> Five commodities that are traded in the forex market. my goodness if this was kcsc i'll never have been a presenter let's see <laughs> uh let's switch papers and see what you got oh wow amendika sana what <laughs> okay 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 it looks like she knows um the first she, she w- 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 how do i how do i say this this is yes this is ether Oh yeah, you can use the mic. We are back. <laughs> okay, so I think she's written in some forex language. I think the first one is Ether or something. Ethereum. Ethereum, yeah, Ethereum. The same, yeah. LTC, I don't know what the Litecoin. Wow, she knows. Litecoin. And then Litecoin, Lit L. But you said other than Bitcoin. Other than Bitcoin. So she has Litecoin, DHS is. She has DHS. I don't know if you guys can find DHS. Uh Neo. Neo? That's Dash. That's Dash. Ah, so she has two, just like me. What do I have there? Dash coin. This is Dash coin. Wow. Okay. And then the last one? Neo coin. Yeah, use the mic. What do I have? Ethereum <laughs> and Bitpesa. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah, Bitpesa is for is from Kenya. Um so she has wow, okay. Um five commodities that are tra- that are traded in the in the in the forex market. She wrote sugar, soybean, coffee, cotton, wheat. She knows, I don't think she can be wrong, can she? <laughs> <laughs> Basically no, those are commodities. So. They are in forex. Yep. All of this. In the forex market. in ah, the commodity okay. section like common how does someone trade like common a common commodity like sugar if i wanted to trade sugar in forex how do i do it how do how exactly does that happen it will be on the market watch so when you click on market watch you're going to find uh, a group called commodities mm. then you pick whatever you want 
coffee, tea, sugar, wheat. You just click on it, it's going to give you a chart. Then there's mm-hmm. the new order. You place your order, wait for sugar to go up or down, make money or lose your money. Ah, okay. Nice. That's interesting. Right, what do I have? That's what they're asking. <laughs> you have currency, gold, something else that I can trade just, in crypto uh, and coffee. <laughs> 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 okay, so she got everything. We can forget about my score. Um, <laughs> what do I have? They are complaining. What do I have? How much? Like how total? You have ten. You have ten out of ten. One. Ah uh, no no no! I can't I can't have one. I have, have two from crypto ready. Total of the score. Number two was on commodities. You just wrote tradable items. <laughs> So you only got coffee or under commodities. Oh. And on the first one, you had Ethereum. So two. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> if you're at home and you've been playing, identify the brand, send us your answers on the SMS slash WhatsApp numbers there. And also on Facebook, we are streaming at KUTV Kenya. I just lost my goodness. But thank you very, I just, uh, thank you very much for playing the game with me and uh, also having the conversation. Now, before we maybe continue and, and, and wrap up, common misconceptions that people have about forex maybe three that you could come up with uh, one uh, forex trading is not betting okay with the respect forex trading is not betting it's trading two forex trading is not investing it's a business you don't invest money in forex trading you trade it's a business so when you ask what will be my returns for a specific amount of money? You're basically asking me if it's share trading. No, it's not share trading. You get into the market, you lose all your money, or you make some coins. So it's basically trading, not investing. And the other one is Forex is easy. <laughs> I don't know. It's not that easy because it requires a lot of time. It requires a lot of time because it requires mastery. So you need to master what you're doing. It requires discipline. It's the most, I think I would say, it's a field that requires a lot of discipline. It's like accounting or something. Right. That Those are the three misconceptions. A question here from one of our viewers, on Lisa, is there a device that is favorable in trading between a phone and a desktop, or there's no difference? It depends with the trader. Uh, some people like phones, like I. I find it's easy to flow using the phone, but there are people who won't really see uh, the markups on their phones, so they want their computers. For me, I would say whatever works for you. Mm-hmm. Is there, is, do, does someone need to be there the whole day to observe how it is happening to, for them to trade, or is it something you can do in the morning and then come back later, check it later? No, don't, don't be there for more than two hours. Don't stay on that screen for more than two hours. You're going to get uh, brain clog. And once you do, you're going to now start making up uh, strategies and patterns that are not even there. So make sure you, when, especially if you're learning, just take two hours a day. Whether you see it or not, walk out. Just keep off from that computer once your two hours are done. Then come back, do that consistently. Keep showing up every two hours, every single day. You can... Uh, also work when you're available because the market is there 24 hours. You don't move the market. It stays there whether you show up or not. So just create time when you're available. Be consistent. If you want to be a morning, if you're a, kind, uh, a morning kind of person, show up in the morning, two hours, go. If you're a midday kind of person, show up two hours, go. If you're a night person, do that. When you do it consistently for over a month, and I mean watching only, I'm not talking about trading. I'm talking about watching because you need to watch fast. You need to activate your subconscious mind on how this market works. And we all know that our subconscious mind learns out of repetition. So repeat watching. Do it for a whole month. If you're watching one specific currency or one specific commodity, watch it for a whole month consistently. While you're doing that, let's assume that you're wired well. So you're going to get to see something. You're going to note that whatever happened on a Tuesday is being repeated again on a Thursday. And you can mark those notes and, you know, learn something. Also do flashcards. If you don't know what flashcards are, of course, you can always visit my uh, Facebook page and read <laughs> just to know what to do. So, again, consistency, consistency, consistency. Be disciplined. Show up, show up, show up. Don't give up. It's doable. It doesn't matter if it's going to take you months, years, weeks, or days, or just a few hours. It's doable. Don't give up. 
Right. Don't give up. That is uh, one zero Geshangi. How to make money in Forex. Where do people buy your books and at how much? So for the hard copy is 1200. You basically go to the page and um, yeah, there. <laughs> you just go to the page and uh, request. There's somebody who inboxes or replies to the messages on the fa uh, Facebook page, which is Forex Exploits Online Academy. That is for people who want to do the hard copy. Then there's the ebook. The ebook, of course, you just text or WhatsApp the number on the page again, and the ebook goes for the, the a thousand. Right. So you just get it. A thousand for the ebook, twelve hundred for the hard copy for us exploits online. This is the book, by the way. Make sure that uh, you're looking for it. And uh, forex is trading. Forex is not investment. Yeah. So make sure that you're putting your money there. You're not expecting return on investment. You are trading. Watch it. Watch it for quite some time so that you can learn. That's what she's saying. And of course, if you need much more information, you can visit her Facebook page where she dispenses this knowledge regularly. She's saying that you should be reading on your own. Yeah? If you want to begin, you begin here before you get to ask her any beginner questions questions. Thank you very much for having the conversation with me. And um, you know, all the best in this and all the people that you're going to help make money. Thank you for having me. All right. If you missed any bits of this conversation, roll back on our Facebook pages at KUTV Kenya, where we've been streaming live. And also on uh, YouTube, we'll be uploading this conversation later on with Wanjiru Gishangi. I'll be taking a break here on Beashara Tuesday. The conversation is still ongoing on Twitter. Hashtag Beashara Tuesday. Don't go too far. <laughs>